Yo, what's going on, everyone? Saints fan here, and welcome back to another episode of Monday Mailbox a series where you guys get to ask me questions about GTA and whatever else you have on your mind. You can do that by going on my Twitter and using the hashtag Ask Saints. Real quick, I just wanted to say if you are a Fallout 4 fan, the season pass, if you don't know, is, is $30 right now, but tomorrow it actually is going to become $50. So if you guys do plan on playing the Fallout 4 DLC, which I definitely will, and I'll be streaming it and all that, go into the description, go to G2A's website, you can even use my code for a little discount, and get it now for $30 before it jumps up in price. Anyway, hopping right into this with the first question from Anuar, I don't know if I said your name there right, but he says the one year anniversary of heist is coming soon, so do you think they'll do any double money heists like they did before? So March 9th is actually the anniversary release date for heists, and it would actually be kind of cool if for that week they had double money for heists, because if the release date of March 15th for the next DLC is true, that would obviously give a lot more people incentive to play the game and, and get hyped up before that DLC. And honestly, it could happen just because recently, over the past few weeks, Rockstar have been doing these double money weeks, so maybe they're in a good mood. Maybe they're gonna do this, and you know, what, what better way to do it than the week of the anniversary? Sort of speaking of money, next question from Chipmunks. He says, does the online portion of the game reward players with enough in-game currency for jobs and missions? This has been like the highly debatable question or topic for the past like two years now in GTA Online. Do you get enough money for actually playing the game? And honestly, at the start, I would say you did. Like, DLCs back in the day, like in the first year, the Zentorno, like that DLC, for example, that was a supercar that was not even a million dollars. Nowadays, it's a million dollars for a lowrider. Like, supercars are two and a half million dollars. And considering the DLC prices have gone up, but yet the mission prices, honestly, they've even gone down a little bit. If anything, back in the day, we actually got more money for missions just because you can complete them in quicker times and still get the maximum amount. But I honestly, I don't really have an answer to this. Would I like more money? Of course. Is it ever going to happen? Never. I don't think so. You can let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Do you feel like the way it is now is fine, or do you wish that it was more balanced? Next question from It's Gizzy, and bear with me here. Do you think that GTA 6 will be bad when they took more time on it than GTA 5, and GTA 6 is the whole US? GTA 5 is smaller though. This is a tough one, I'll admit. You know, we may have to revisit this one next week. I'm not really sure where you got the fact that the GTA 6 is going to be the entire map because I'm almost positive that's not going to be the case. If anybody wants to touch on that question in the comments, feel free. Moving on though to Broclaw, why would Rockstar make the Warstock vehicles 25% off if they just made a two times money event for us to get some money for the upcoming DLC? Well, I mean, the most logical reason is because like it was Rhino week and obviously the Rhino tank is a Warstock vehicle. Plus, there are still people out there who didn't have all of the Pegasus vehicles. Like, I'm sure there were people out there who still didn't even have the Hydra, even though they really wanted it. So, so yeah, you're kind of spending the money that you would be saving for the next DLC. But if you really wanted the Hydra, or if you really wanted the Savage, or one of those other military vehicles, then I think that's why they did that this week. And then finally, the last two questions. These are kind of similar, so they're sort of the question of the day. The first one from Josh. If you can only add three more cars to Benny's, what would you want? And then the last one from Tommy, do you think supercars will ever be able to be customized at Benny's and how much do you think they'll cost? So in the comments, let me know, you know, if you could pick three, what three would you choose? And then do you think supercars or do you even want supercars to be added to Benny's? I'll start with the second question first and what I'll actually do. And the reason the thumbnail picture is the picture of the Bugatti. I don't know if you guys knew this, but earlier this morning, they actually Bugatti actually announced their new car. It's called like the Bugatti Chiron. It honestly does look pretty similar to the Veyron, which is why I think it actually be a pretty awesome idea to add it to Benny's as the upgraded adder. Now, performance wise, I don't think, you know, that would change at all, really, just because the adder is up there with the top. So change the performance too much it would just become super overpowered. But changing the look to it and changing a lot of the customization for it, that would be awesome because the editor kind of sucks now. Nobody really uses it. It was like the OG supercar and now it's just left in the dust with all these newer ones. And since this new Chiron version doesn't really look that much different, it would be similar to the Sultan going to the Sultan RS. Like it's still the same car, but it's just slightly modified. 
Now, you did say how much do you think it will cost? If supercars ever did come, especially like some of the higher end ones, you already know they're going to cost a lot. And yeah, that's going to make some people probably upset. But if they're just sort of luxury upgrades, they don't really do much to, perf to the performance, like the T20 and all that. Minimum, I would say a million dollars. It would honestly probably be around two million, I would say, for a, a full upgrade of like a supercar at Benny's. It definitely would be expensive, but I think adding some more customization to those supercars that we use so often would be much appreciated. And going back to the first question, you know, if, if they would allow three more cars, I definitely, after seeing that, if they did something with the adder, that's, that's one of them. The other two cars, I would probably have to say, and this is maybe a little bit far out there, but like the Hummer, the mammoth in the game, if you made that into a sort of realistic off-road car, that'd be pretty interesting. And then maybe some sort of bike. I, I want to see what Benny can do to a bike. What kind of customization can be done to a bike that is different from the LSC that makes it more unique and, and stand out more. But that is it with this episode of the Q&A. Thank you guys for watching. As always, like I said, if you do want to ask a question, just go on Twitter. Use the hashtag AskSaints. Let me know all your thoughts in the comment section. See you guys in the next video. Drop a like, subscribe, all that stuff. And as always, it's your boy Saints fan. I'm out. Peace.